Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. This video is going to be about Chelsea versus Liverpool and how Chelsea beat Liverpool one to nothing at Anfield. It's going to be made using Keyframe, a great way to produce professional level content to all your coaches, players, or whoever you make content for. So let's get right into it. Chelsea, they played with their back three as they usually have under Thomas Tuchel. Double pivot was Conte and Jorginho giving them a very influential build-up structure on the Liverpool pressing front three and the jumping midfielders, which was able to then create space between the lines for players like Ziyech and Mason Mount on the left half space. So from here, what we saw from Chelsea and their back three versus the 4-3-3 from Liverpool and their typical pressing system. We have Mane, Firmino, and Salah, and now Mane and Firmino, or Mane and Salah would be responsible for using their cover shadow at times or pressing from out to in on the wide center defenders, giving the front three a narrow look and using their cover shadows to try and block passes to the wing back. Then this was also influenced by the Chelsea double pivot and on the near side the player who was not being taken away by Firmino's cover shadow would then elicit a response from the near side central midfielder in this case Curtis Jones would then jump to try and minimize the influence of Conte and prevent these connections in the mutual help space but Oftentimes, they were able to use Conte to find the third man or either of the double pivots to find Reese James or on the weak side Ben Chilwell as the free man as the wing back. So, from here, we often saw after the jump of the midfielder, then Chelsea would also have a free player between the lines. And depending on the positioning of Werner, he would then pin some of the defenders and with his pace, they were reluctant to jump to release too much space in behind, which often gave them um, freedom and more space between the lines to progress the ball, oftentimes through Mason Mount as well. Now with Reese James on the ball, we see the positioning of Timo Werner and his partnership with Hakim Ziyech. And now this was quite clever from Thomas Tuchel, giving Timo Werner the freedom to make these runs in behind between central defenders into the half space when the ball was with Reese James or the other wing back because this allowed Hakim Ziyech to play between the lines and take advantage of the space left by Curtis Jones who was a midfielder who would then jump and now we can see the space that was created in the half space between the lines for Hakim Ziyech or with Liverpool's high line, there's always the opportunity to play the direct ball in behind and use Timo Werner's qualitative advantages. So now with Liverpool in possession of the ball, they had a few variations going in this game, one of which was using the deep fullback, mainly Trent Alexander-Arnold on the weak side he would then pinch into the half space on a deeper line in line with almost the central defenders forming this make makeshift back three while Andy Robertson would almost occupy off the screen here in a higher winger position which would then separate the connections between his central defender and Andy Robertson who's now almost a winger and now this would allow for a wide structure rotation for a player like Curtis Jones to occupy the wide area in attempts to pull out the double pivot from Chelsea and try and create space um, through the central corridor or either half spaces. But with Chelsea's shape, they often lined up in a 5-3-2 or 5-2-3 depending on the phase. There was more often than not a 5-3-2 with Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner working together, but often they weren't they weren't very eager to jump out and press if the situation 
wasn't right. They were more than happy than to control the space in the platform in their mid block and control the central midfielders. But as we can see here, one of the big things is the fluidity in Liverpool's team. So with Curtis Jones dropping deeper, we have the false nine, Roberto Firmino, coming in as almost a free player. And with Salah and Mane narrow through the half space and the width then being held by Andy Robertson and maybe Salah on the weak side. So now Chelsea in possession again. And now this is a really crucial situation that was able to happen a lot and led to many progressions through the left half space for Chelsea. So with Chelsea's 3-2 buildup, obviously Firmino is responsible for one of the Chelsea holding midfielders and the other would be responsible for a deeper midfielder of Liverpool jumping into this area which then also has a response to leaving space between the lines. But from here, we see Salah pressing narrow, Mane holding his position between the wing back and central defender. So now our front three from Liverpool are effectively dragged towards one side, thus leaving the weak side relatively vacated. And now, especially Thiago with his physical qualities not being his strong suit, he'll have to make a decision on whether he jumps to occupy this weak side double pivot to then control the space in the first two lines of Chelsea's buildup and then concede space between the lines or is he going to hang back and then allow the free player through Jorginho to then progress the ball. So what ended up happening is it was actually Curtis Jones the player who's jumping and still they were able to create a little qualitative superiority, meaning Jorginho's press resistance on the ball and through the double pivot movements is now able to then exploit the amount of space left when Curtis Jones jumps as a midfielder. So when Curtis Jones jumps, there's massive amounts of space left by him further in the half space, which is why they were so effective through Mason Mount then be able, be, being able to progress the ball through the half space because now with the two midfielders left, Wijnaldum and Thiago, they had to worry about the third line pass into Werner as well as both half spaces occupied by Ziyech and Mount, which was just too much horizontal space for them to cover. So here we see the space that we had just talked about, Mason Mount drifting into the half space. And now we have Ziyech in the weak side half space, which Wijnaldum is taking care of. But as we see the positioning of Thiago, and right before this he had a check on his shoulder on where Timo Werner is. So while he's, his attention is split between Timo Werner and Mason Mount, he, Mason Mount is able to then move into the half space even wider to then create this progression and positional superiority to then access the space between the lines and move forward with almost a 3v2 when we take into consideration the wide structure. So again, now without Timo Werner on Mason's Mount side, because there's really two types of progressions using Mason Mount the left half space, one of which is what we just saw, using Timo Werner on the same vertical corridor as Mason Mount to help him pin and influence the positioning of Thiago, whereas now we'll see Timo Werner on the right half space working with Ziyech, and now the Liverpool front three Again, needing either them to play a little asymmetrically to cover both holding midfielders or to have a midfielder jump to then control this as well. But with Mason's mounts positioning, it differs here slightly. He now starts deeper when Timo Werner is not helping him affect the positioning of Thiago because now with him starting deeper, 
we have the ability for him to access this space in behind when Tiago jumps. So now with Conte on the ball, we see the double movement or the blindside movement created by Mason Mount to then create the superiority to progress and we have Tiago just caught out with his orientation too much on the ball and when players are in the blind side it's quite hard for them to respond and we have our three Liverpool midfielders then conceding the space in behind with both them jumping for different reasons. Now Mason Mount progressing through the half space and now we have the positional players between him and his wing back able to use combination play to use this to then create advantages to progress the ball with players on the weak side like Ziyech and Werner to then progress. Liverpool in possession again using their asymmetric back four with Trent Alexander-Arnold as the deep line playmaker creating the back three and with Andy Robertson moving higher up the field almost as a winger creating the height and width of the team shape. This allows Mane to then clearly move more narrow between the lines. Wijnaldum as the lone pivot here with Thiago Alcantara and Firmino higher between the lines creating a four-man midfield structure. Salah also creating height and width through the team trying to isolate defenders of Chelsea to then potentially receive a longer pass in behind to try and use this qualitative advantage that Salah might have but with Chelsea's back three and double pivot they control the space between the lines very well they had the right combination of jumping and using cover shadows between the three center backs and the two holding midfielders then with the front three they mix it between using their cover shadow to block Tiago and Wijnaldum, as well as um, try and isolate possession to one side and put the right amount of pressure on the ball. So here we have again the ball going in to the midfield, Gini Wijnaldum. And now we see Curtis Jones higher than Mane allowing Mane to drop between the lines to get on the ball in a deeper area to then turn and run out the Chelsea defense. But with Chelsea, their defensive setup, the two holy midfielders played quite well. And then almost numerical equality at the back with Rudiger. With Rudiger focused on Salah. Christensen jumping to Firmino, the false nine. And now Asbiel Cueta being pinned by Curtis Jones, allowing Mane to almost become free, but blocked by the double pivot cover shadows. And the one thing I was surprised about was the willingness for Christensen to jump and follow Firmino, Firmino because he could have passed him on to the double pivot, but with the security they had and how they played in 1v1 situations with the balls in behind, it worked out quite well for Chelsea. So now, looking again, now we see similar setup, but this time with Thiago as the central pivot between this asymmetric back four. And a lot of times this was the case with Thiago as the pivot with Trent Alexander-Arnold deeper, or Thiago would dro drop to the right half space um, alongside central defenders, or Jeannie Wijnaldum might and release Trent Alexander-Arnold into a higher position, then thus allowing Salah to invert and play more between the lines. So now we see the situation with Thiago dropping the back three from Liverpool, then created via the holding midfielder dropping, Genie Wijnaldum's the single pivot, and as we said before, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson would then be the players creating width 
while players like Mane, Curtis Jones, Salah, or Firmino would then be able to occupy space between the lines. And here's a little situation of the 5-3-2 Chelsea setup as we talked about. Mason Mount playing through the left half space and Conte through the right half space. Because of their physical qualities and their mobility they have, this allowed Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech to almost play as a front two and press the ball. And as they move deeper, Conte would slide alongside Jorginho and Ziyech would then drop as a, almost a right midfielder and then varying their height in relation to the double pivot. So now on the ball we talked about Salah with these runs in behind and the numerical equality that was played via Chelsea. So Christensen on Firmino, Azbil Cueta, Mane, and Rudiger Salah. And now this presented the situation with Sala and Thiago and playing very direct beyond because of Chelsea's high line and their high level of horizontal and vertical compactness left space in behind but was defended quite well from the three central defenders and often didn't lead to any dangerous chances. So now Chelsea in possession in the second half looked very similar to them in the first half with not many concepts changing. A double pivot playing between the front three of Liverpool, especially in deeper areas. We'll see the front three. In this situation, Mane drops a little deeper while Curtis Jones moves higher. Just a situational thing that wasn't a trend throughout the match, but something to note here. And through the double pivot affecting the front three and even the two central midfielders that are deeper than the front three. This allows Mason Mount to move wider in the half space to then look to progress the ball via positive reception and take advantage of the use of a wide structure, which we'll see right now, the use of a wide structure freeing up movement through the half space and looking to get into dangerous areas. Three man wide structure and now looking to ultimately get into the golden zone or the assist zone to create chances and look to create high quality chances through a cutback or low cross. And now the last picture is Liverpool in possession of the ball. Again, we see the asymmetry and the movement from Liverpool's front three. Now with two, two players, Mane and Firmino, pinning two wide center backs. Now Chelsea have a three versus two, numerical superiority in their back line, a double pivot also covering them with cover shadows. And Liverpool now, we can look at how they are with their asymmetric back four and they're holding midfielders willingness to drop between the lines so now this is Curtis Jones dropping deeper and creating this back three Thiago and Wijnaldum almost play alongside each other in certain situations and now Salah moves wider to take advantage of the space well he'll have um, Trent Alexander-Arnold then progress forward and Firmino higher between the lines to then move forward through their wide structure. So that's the analysis. I hope everyone enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.